How is it being a young mother in a country where people have their first child at a very high age? Hello there. Hello there. Hey, Saga. Vad ska vi göra? Angkor! The last days of winter has been very wintry with snow, cold temperatures and a lot of sun. This weather really makes me appreciate living in Sweden. There are four seasons. We even have snow in the city center. We've been trying to enjoy the weather because it might be the last really wintry weather we get here before spring. <laughs> Feeding the birds is always something that our daughter and we grown-ups as well really like doing. After some hours outside, it feels nice to warm up with a Swedish fika. This place celebrates a hundred years and their interior is filled with historical pictures. First of all, I just want to make it clear that I don't see myself as a young mother. However, the society I live in do because here in Sweden, the average age for your first child is over 30. And I was 24 when I got pregnant with my first child. And I am now 27 and I have two children. It's also worth mentioning that the age among ethnic Swedes is probably a lot higher because around one fourth of fertile women in Sweden today are immigrants. And in Africa, for example, the age is around 18 to 20. But why do women get pregnant at such a high age? I think there are many reasons for this. And one of them is People want to have everything sorted out. They want to have a house, they want to have a career and so on. And I think that this is a big mistake because I think that once you're facing the situation, you sort everything out. You don't have to have everything perfect because then you will always find an excuse to not have a child because there will always be something popping up in your life. There will never be this perfect timing. And I can only speak for myself, but when I got pregnant, it wasn't planned. We still studied both and uh, we managed to sort everything out and we live a very stable life now. So I don't think that you should wait for the perfect timing because there really is none. There's also this non-child agenda in the society today and I think that this is because of feminists where you're not supposed to be bound to something which you get when you have a child. You are bound to something and you want to be bound to this living creature that you created and most women want to stay at home with their child when they have one and this goes against goes against the feminist views where you should work for someone else and not spending time with your child and now i also have to add the environmental factor to this discussion because some people don't want to have children because they make an environmental footprint social media is full of negative videos regarding motherhood and parenting. Motherhood is seen as no sleep, postpartum depression, tantrums, no private life and changes to your body that are negative and so on and so on. So it's only the negative effects that are being portrayed in social media today and not the good ones. And this of course has an effect because we consume so much of social media. We live in a very individualistic society where we couldn't imagine sacrificing ourselves or our own well-being for another person. These are only some of the reasons, but this also goes hand in hand with Sweden having a very low amount of children per person. The average is around 1.7, but this number also needs to be modified, of course, because we have a lot of immigrants, as I said, and in Africa, for example, the average amount of 
children per person is 4.7. So among ethnic Swedes, this number is probably even lower than 1.7. And this also, of course, has a connection to women having children, their first child at a very high age, because when you are 35, your fertility rate goes down at a rapid speed. So if you're not having your child earlier than when you're 30 plus, you don't have that much time to have more children. So how is it being a young mother in Sweden today? I would say that there are a lot of benefits. And first of all, I feel no stress. I feel no stress when it comes to having as many children as I want, because I started at an early age. I also have a lot of energy to play with my children because I am young and I have energy to go to experience new things with them and maybe do things that older people wouldn't do because they don't have the energy to it. There are also a lot of benefits when it comes to recovery after a pregnancy. So for example, your skin has much more elasticity when you're younger than when you're older. So after pregnancy, you tend to have less loose skin, for example. Risks during pregnancy tends to be higher when you're older than when you're younger. And also for the fetus, when it comes to Down syndrome, for example, you have a higher degree of getting a child with Down syndrome if you're older. I also get a lot of positive response from the Children's Health Center here in Sweden. I think that they also see the benefit with mothers being younger because there are benefits both for the mother but also for the child. But there's also some downsides connected to being a young mother, of course. And I would say that the main one is that it's harder to find friends the same age as you because there really aren't that many mothers that are your age. Other than that, I would say that some of the negative effects are connected to not being a young mother but on the society's view on being a mother because this leads to people putting their child at kindergarten at a very, very early age, which leads to playgrounds being empty during the day, for example. So when I take my kids to the playground, we usually go in the afternoon because that's when there are some children outside. This is also a problem when it comes to groups of mothers, because there are groups, but these groups are for mothers with children under one year. There aren't any as I know of, with four mothers with children over one year. So to summarize how it is being a young mother in Sweden today, I would say that it's filled with a lot of benefits. And it's filled with a lot of love and a lot of things to do because you have energy to do it. The sooner you have your child in your life, the more time you will have with your child. Me and the children have spent a lot of time outside. Snow is a perfect play material when the sand is too hard to dig in. We also had time to visit a museum focused on nature and science. You can really see in our daughter's eyes how much she is experiencing and learning when we are at these places, even if it's just by touching, watching and playing. Me and my husband also enjoys these kind of activities. There's a lot to learn for us as well. The museum is well adjusted for children with puzzles and other interactive games where you use your different senses. This is like a playground, but not the playground you visit every day. A totally new one with a lot to learn. For me and my husband, it's really important to stimulate our children's brains, but in a fun and playful way. Learning is fun and since we want them to reach their full potential, it's really important to keep the learning fun.
<laughs> Allihopa. <laughs> Our daughter finished his it by kissing all the animals goodbye. For alla pussar. Och kolla den här sälen och den är dagens. Ja, det var en tjock säl. En dyka.